Hey guys, Chris here, and today I am hopping in to talk about one of my favorite things in life. And no, it's not coffee, although coffee is brilliant. And no, it's not my dogs, but I love my dogs a lot. And it's not Lindsay. Well, maybe it is Lindsay, um, because she's watching this video, I know. The thing I want to talk about today is a thing that everybody needs, everybody, well, most people want, Definitely makes life a whole lot easier, makes the world go round, so they say. For us, it makes our wheels go round, and that is money. So what do I have to say about money that matters to you? Because you're an adult, you've lived long enough to have your own concepts of money and all of that. Well, the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that money is a necessity in our lives, just like it's a necessity in your life, and we are in different situations, you, the viewer, and Lindsay and I and our pups. And so I wanna share a little bit about our money situation, how we think about money, what we do about money, and how that money works for us on the road. Um, because what we've found is really there's two key principles about money that make life on the road possible for us. The first is you can make money. Talk a little bit about that. That's the reason why our videos have been so sparse and intermittent in these last couple months is because we have had to focus on the making of the money, which means work, that four letter word. So we have done all sorts of things, call it our side hustle. Um, I'm gonna touch back on that in just a minute. Um, but the other part of money that a lot of people uh, overlook is this. Penny saved is a penny earned, right? Yeah, unless you're not saving money, unless you're not being careful with your budget. So what I wanna share with you is how we think about money, how it affects us both while we're here in Florida and when we're on the road um, full time. And so we've gotta have money to make the whole life work. You know that, and that's what we do. So looking at our money situation here, uh, we've had several situations over the last three years or so that we've been on the road where we've had to come off the road because of money. Um, our first year didn't go the way we thought. We had, oh, it was almost $10,000 worth of repairs that sucked the, almost the last of our savings out, made us very uncomfortable. Um, and so we came off the road and we worked and we saved and we worked and we saved and we did whatever we could do. There's lots of different side hustles that we've done and we call it our hustle because that's how we see life. We're in pursuit of the abundant life on the road. For us, that is the greatest joy that we can get out on the road, see the most incredible, beautiful things, meet the most amazing people, have incredible experiences interacting with people. That for us is our calling, that's, that's the desire of our hearts, is to be out on the road. But in order to get out on the road and to stay out on the road, we have to do what we call the hustle. Uh, this isn't slinging drugs on the street or, or you know, whatever uh, that hustle gets associated with. This is just, we don't stop moving. We're always moving when we're trying to get this hustle going for us. That being said, you're a part of this hustle because we are focused on making money on the road. And we've got a whole series of our, in our website or a whole part of our website that's dedicated to tips and tricks and how to make money on the road. We're not unique in this situation. Where we're unique, I think, and you guys have probably figured this out because you're sticking with us and our audience is slowly growing, is we don't walk around in bikinis and we don't have big bad attitudes and we don't like, uh, we don't script things as you can probably tell. I mean, I just have to look over at my note cards sometimes and you can see me look away because I'm not really good in front of the camera. I love teaching, I love helping, and so that's our passion for being in front of the camera. Otherwise, we don't like this at all. It's very uncomfortable, it's hard to do, it takes a lot of time, and YouTube pays us about $4 per thousand views of our videos. We don't have a lot of videos that are getting a lot of views. Some of them are doing great. We've got some great tour videos out there, our dry docking videos doing great. That's how we attracted some of you, I know. Um, but we're just letting you know that YouTube is such a small part of how we make our hustle that sometimes it's hard to wake up in the morning and say, oh great, I'm gonna go stick a camera in my face. Oh yeah, and then I'm gonna spend the time editing the video but we love you and you guys have been great to us and that's why we're continuing to film. We've got a great series coming up. We think we'll do great for helping you and other people understand all the remodeling process of a Class C and the struggles that we went through to do that. But it is also part of our hustle um, because we're gonna be investing time where we're not working a normal job. We're gonna be working on uh, getting these videos out to you. So that's one part of our hustle while we're here that goes with us on the road. Another part of our hustle on the road is our website. 
If you've been to our website, awesome. It's easier for us to articulate information in writing because it's easier for us to articulate information in writing. So if you wanna go and learn how to paddle Antelope Canyon um, outside of Page, Arizona on your kayak or your stand-up paddleboard, I could tell you about it in the video, but I'm gonna leave out some details. So go to our website and you can find all kinds of great information. You're gonna come across ads when you go to our website. And so that is part of our monetization process. I haven't been to a website in a very, very long time where I wasn't bombarded with ads. We hate it that we have to bombard, not, I don't want to say bombard, we hate that we have to have ads and hopefully you don't feel bombarded. We don't have the video ad pop-ups and the things that you can't click away from, um, but we are running ads because as we've found in this industry and in this space and in life in general, nothing is free. So whether you're watching your favorite TV show, uh, what do you end up having to do? You end up having to watch commercials or let's say you want to bypass the commercials so now you're paying for a subscription or you're paying for cable, or you're paying for whatever, we all pay for information or entertainment in some way or another. So being straightforward with you, we hate that we have to put this stuff on you, but that's part of our hustle when we're on the road. Because we love the road and we feel like the information is valuable. So hopefully you stick with us because you feel the information is valuable and you enjoy us as people being as real with you as we possibly can. So another part of our hustle are buying the things or selling things that we recommend. And we do that primarily through Amazon, through Renogy, we love Renogy products, and through Harvest Hosts, which by far is our favorite camping membership. If you don't know about those three things, they're in the description below, of course, um, as you've become aware with YouTubers out there. We like to make sure you know where to find the supplemental information. Harvest Hosts is an awesome opportunity to be able to camp out in a vineyard, a farm, a distillery. I mean, the, the places now are almost unlimited and there's thousands of them across the US. You boondock and you meet great people. So that's something that when you go through our link and you subscribe to uh, become a member, then we get a little kickback for that. Same thing when we tell you we love our Blackstone Griddle. We've got a website post out there about our favorite grills. You may not want that grill, but we've done our research before we bought it and we share that research with you. And if you buy that Blackstone Grill, we get a little bit of a kickback from that. So that's part of our hustle. All of these little things coming together, um, help us establish our business and keep us on the road. So that's how we make money on the road. Right now we're in the process of um, working so that we can, like physically working here, um, doing these side jobs so that we can replenish the funds that we borrowed from ourselves to do all the remodeling upgrades. The thought was if we took money from the last of our savings, we could hustle make money and pay ourselves back and then once we hit that number we'd hit the road and that's kind of sort of been the plan but we've had of course all kinds of things thrown at us um, positive things good things there's all these opportunities that we've pursued to replenish the funds and once we get comfortable with the amount of savings that we've got which isn't a lot we're not like you know talking about millions of dollars here we're not even talking about tens of thousands of dollars because we live so frugally on the road we're talking about just a couple thousand okay and that's the second part of this conversation is sharing with you the idea that you can make money and you can earn money and you can invest and have money coming in and all of that's great, but if you spend more money than you make, you're always going to be behind. So the save money is not physically saving money, it's just not spending money that you already have. So that comes with a budget. And when we go out on the road, we live on approximately $2,000 per month or less, usually less. And that's counting all of our, what we call our home expenses. We still have to pay for healthcare. We still have to pay for RV insurance. We still have uh, other medical expenses we pay with Lindsay's Crohn's disease. So there are all these expenses, our cell phone bill, things that we call fixed expenses. They don't change. We know we're going to have them, whether we're on the road or whether we're in a brick and mortar home somewhere, we're going to have those expenses. So our fixed expenses are included in that 2000. And then we live off of about $40 a day on the road. Doesn't sound like a lot because you can pull into a campground and just blow $40 right there. You can have sit down and have a dinner for two and there's $40 easily gone, right? So $40 a day covers everything on the road. We will be settling into our budget when we get out on the road and we'll share that with you and we'll share each of our line items and show you ways that we save money. So what is, here's a little quiz, by the way, I was a teacher in a former life. What is the most expensive 
item in a travel budget, an RV travel budget? What's the biggest expense related to living in an RV that you have to account for? You ready? You knew that already because I already alluded to it. Fuel. Fuel. So our RV, our truck camper, we got 11 miles per gallon. Great. We thought it was awesome. Everybody else said that's terrible um, because people with cars are used to getting 30 plus miles a gallon. We got 11. So now we've upgraded this class C RV. We put some bigger tires on there so we can handle some dirt roads and we start driving it around and we're getting seven miles to the gallon. Now, if you have a big motorhome, a class A, you're laughing at me right now because seven may not be good. Or maybe you got a diesel pusher that's getting better, you know, mileage than our, our V10 gas engine. Um, maybe you got a van and you're still getting great mileage. Uh, you know, seven miles per gallon, it is what it is. That's part of the RV life is you get used to uh, expenses and things that you're not used to. So it's, we're paying more for fuel, but we're paying less for not having a mortgage or rent or, you know, some of those other things that come with the brick and mortar home. Fuel by far is the biggest expense. So how are we planning on cutting down on fuel? Well, the first thing is I've already kind of cheated, if you will. I've squirreled away a little bit of money for this first couple months getting out on the road because we want to get west of the Mississippi in a very, very big way. We're not talking about taking a nice slow trip because we're just, we're pent up. We're ready for getting out of the south. It's 90 degrees, it's humid, we're ready to go. So we're gonna spend a little bit money on uh, of savings extra on fuel to get us out there. But once we get out and once we get settled into life on the road again, the idea is that we're gonna travel much slower because we have to factor in the fact that we get seven miles per gallon, Gas right now on a national average is over $3 per gallon. So we're gonna go slow. That's how you plan for that, you go slow. What is the biggest way we can save money when we're on the road? What do you guys think? Biggest way to save money. The way that we always save money, if we, if we have to go out to eat, like when we were in Buffalo, I was like, we're gonna have buffalo chicken wings. And we're gonna have beef on wet because that was something that I knew to be a local special specialty. So we spent a little bit more money on food in Buffalo than, than we thought we would, than we should. So what do we have to do? Boondock. We, in our minds, out of that $40 per day, we say like 20 to 25, we commit to going toward um, camping expenses. And so if we don't camp, then that money gets thrown back into the pot and we get to go eat another day. Food's my favorite thing to splurge on on the road. As much as we like activities and being able to see and do cool things, I would like to eat food everywhere I go, like go out to eat and enjoy local stuff because I love food. So that being said, we kind of balance our budget by if we go over in one way, we have to come back in the other because we can't afford to go uh, beyond that $2,000. That's the idea of how we live on the road. Now there's lots of line item expenses in a budget that you'll need to look for. And we've got a post out there somewhere and I got to clean something up for you as well. So we'll be coming back to this idea of budgeting as we get out on the road because we're going to keep a live budget. Um, we did that when we went up the East Coast for the fall colors, our little fall uh, season three, I believe it was. And we kept a live budget. And what I mean by that is every time we had an expense, I logged it in a Google Doc or a Google Sheet and it was made live immediately. And if you clicked on the link, you could go and you could look at it. I left notes about where we stayed and why something was more, why something was less, because you end up with all these different things getting thrown at you. Like, what do you do about laundry? Uh, when I was 21 and backpacking through Europe, I washed my laundry in my sink. I'm a little bit classier than that now. So we do go to a laundromat, but that could easily be eight, 10, 12, $15, depending on where we're doing our laundry. Then you have the things like an oil change. We've got to factor that in. We used to pay for an oil change in the truck. I crawl under this RV and I do the oil change myself, but we're still talking about $40 in uh, oil and filters. So there's all these little expenses. Dog food's another one. Dogs gotta eat. Dogs gotta eat more than us. They can't go get their own food for themselves. So that's another expense that you'll see come into our budget um, and just kind of pass through because everything has to make it through this $2,000 or else for us, life on the road is not possible. For you, that budget you may be laughing at and saying, well, you know, I, you know, I poop out $2,000 a day. Great. If that's you, um, please make donations payable to, uh, via PayPal, hello at call to wander.com. We will be very appreciative of those poopy donations. However, most of us are on some kind of a uh, fixed income, so to speak, whether we're retired or whether we're just used to living off of a certain amount of money. 
And so whatever that is for you, know that it can be as more or less on the road. We like to tell people it's much more affordable to be on the road than it is to live at home. For one, when you camp, you usually get your power and your water and your cable and all that stuff combined together, sometimes Wi-Fi. But when you have a brick and mortar, you've got all these different bills for all those different utilities. Plus, your mortgage is usually higher, right? So there's all kinds of comparisons. We say life on the road is cheaper, but if you're driving and spending all that uh, money on fuel and you're staying at KOA campgrounds and you're going and doing all the great tours and eating three meals out a day, your budget's going to be huge. And that's okay. If that's your lifestyle, that's fantastic. We're trying to create this environment with our channel where we can share our real life experience and share with you why the things are the way they are. Um, because in Baja, which we plan to go back to this winter, we are planning on going and doing whale watching tours and we're planning on swimming with the whale sharks and we're planning on swimming with the sea lions and going and doing uh, these different things that are going to cost a little bit of money. We're going to account for that we're gonna save and we're gonna make it fit into our $2,000 budget because that's us. But if you wanna to go to Baja and you wanna go out on a charter fishing boat every day because you've worked your whole life and you've retired and that's what you wanna do, awesome, fantastic. And we'll kind of point out like, this is how much it could cost if you wanted to go do this kind of tour in Loreto or in Los Perillas. Um, and we're, we do that throughout all of our travels. We just wanna be real with you and share with you the real life expenses that you could have when you're out on the road. We don't stay at KOA campgrounds unless we're held hostage with a knife to our throats and we're told that we have to. That's happened one time because we didn't know how to visit the Grand Canyon before. It was our first month out on the road. We didn't know that we had other options and we paid $70 that night for KOA. I went and I took seven showers because I'm gonna get my hot water out of it. We washed our laundry, but it was camping in the dirt. It really was a terrible experience. I threw up three times because I was like, I'm paying too much. I'm paying too much. It made me sick. So we never, ever, 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 ever have stayed at KOA. But if you are the CEO of KOA and you're watching this, which I doubt you are, you work for KOA, you got a great company and you cater to some great people. You just don't cater to our people and we won't be back. Um, that's just part of our budget. But if you're a koa -er, by all means, enjoy that. There's some great uh, experiences and opportunities that come when you have more money. That's where money makes the world go round, or in our case, money makes the wheels go round. Um, the more money you have, great. We're not telling you don't spend it. We're just trying to share with you our budget and our way of thinking. That's the most important thing, I think, is we think about money as a tool. It's not something that drives us. It's not something that um, makes us have to do anything any particular way. We had our catastrophic breakdown in Utah. Some of you were there a part of that and following along with us. When that happened, we went from thinking it was a simple breakdown to being told it was a total breakdown to being told it was gonna cost us having to buy a new truck, which was gonna be $40,000 that we definitely didn't have. All this stuff started going through our heads and then we're like, what this is talking, it's just a simple, it's a function of money. And so when we removed the money and we said, well, what, is the best solution. We were able to think more clearly and say, if it costs us money, that's okay, but let's make the best decision in that regard so we're only using what money we needed to use. And so we see money as a tool, not something that drives us. So if you want to achieve something, maybe it's that bucket list trip to Alaska, we highly recommend, those are our most popular posts. We're planning tentatively to go back next summer. If Alaska's on your bucket list, it's not cheap, so start thinking about that $2,000 a month in Alaska to get there, enjoy Alaska and get back is just not possible. Uh, it is possible, but you're not going to get the most out of it. You need to do that fishing trip and go catch yourself a halibut or a salmon. You need to be able to go and hike on the glacier or go do the tour, um, you know, wh whatever it is, the whale watching tour or the kayaking through the glaciers. You need to be able to truly enjoy Alaska. And so $2,000 may not be a lot for you. It won't be enough for us when we go back. So we've got to start saving and planning on how we can hustle some money up to go back to Alaska if that's the direction that we end up going. If you have retired, maybe you've retired twice and you got all kinds of money coming in. If you want to spend it, you know, living large on the road, you can do that. Or if you've got a much smaller fixed income, you'll find that you can, I don't want to say 100% positively because I don't want to be blamed for your decision, but you may find that it is cheaper to live on the road. Sure, if you're in that situation, you can suck it up, stay at home, live near family, whatever, make it work. 
or you may find that you can make it work for less out on the road. Plus, what we like to tell people about our jobs on the road when we're working on our website, when we're working on our YouTube videos, when we're working on all of this stuff is we sometimes wake up and have the most beautiful office. And so if you're waking up and you're having a normal day and it's just boring, you're going to the coffee maker, making the coffee, stepping outside and hearing traffic blow by and it's not a great neighborhood and you know, you're just thinking about the Grand Tetons or Alaska or Baja or Maine or whatever it is. Um, I'm not saying it's your decision to go, but I want to let you know money is a tool. It should not be everything for you. Younger crowd, we don't have a lot of younger crowd, but if you're out there and you're in your early 20s and you're thinking like, how does this work and how is it possible? Send us an email, we'll let you know. I turned 40 this year, so we're not spring chickens, but we're also not at that retired age. We're in this weird, awkward place where we're supposed to have a white picket fence in a house with two cars and 2.3 kids and a dog. And we got two dogs and no kids and no house and no picket fence. And you know, that's, that's our life. And so if you find yourself being pulled in either direction, you're retired and your family thinks you're crazy because you want to go travel or you're a young professional and you want to take your job on the road or take a year off and travel, there's all kinds of things you can do if you look at money as a tool and not as the total driving factor. We can help you set up and we've got resources we'll, we'll point you to for helping you save money now, helping you come up with side hustles that you can do, helping you start a business on the road if that's what you need. And then on the flip side, if you already have that money coming in, we can show you how you can save money while you're out there on the road. I wanted to take this time. I shared a lot more than I thought and a lot less than I thought I would. That's just why I like writing website posts more than I like doing videos. If you've taken the time to watch this far and you have any questions, please reach out. Leave us a comment. If it's a specific question about your specific situation, send us an email. Hello at called to wander. I respond to all of them. All correspondence that comes our way, we respond to. So. Please make sure to send us that email and we'll give you some tips, some specific tips and pointers if it's specific to your instance, or generally just leave us a comment. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it the thumbs up. I imagine I'm gonna get a couple thumbs down just because it's a talking video. Hopefully there's some value in what I've shared with you today. Of course, stay tuned. We've got some exciting things coming up really, really soon. Uh, just a preview, all of our little side hustles are done. Lindsay and I are pretty much done with the working part. We've topped off the savings and now we're focusing on getting all of our videos put together for our remodel so we can get them out to you as we get back out on the road, which will be very, very soon. We hope to see you out on the road. We hope you stay engaged with us. Thanks again for being a part of our journey. We could not live this life without you from all the positive comments, from all of the generosity, from just knowing that you're out there, giving us a time of day, you make our world go round more than the money makes the world go round. Thanks for being a part of this journey and we'll check in with you soon.